the third uh, before this third webinar the first webinar was on the yoga and ancient science of healing the second webinar was on the topic yoga and therapeutic approach in modern life and we have come to the third webinar where we will be learning about and we will be listening on the topic yoga and cultural misappropriation so i welcome you all again in this uh, third webinar of the yatra series as you all know that uh, yatra is a journey and uh, it's a journey uh, when we talk about yoga it's a journey uh, when we move from our gross to the subtle and even to the causal so this is the yatra where we will be learning where all the yoga aspirants all the yoga participants those who want to learn about yoga will know the basic the more important aspects of yoga so without taking much of the time let me invite our yoga students for the opening prayer Thank you, Vishakha and team. Thank you for the opening prayer. And uh, let me introduce the program. That as earlier I also mentioned that this is a yatra, and a yatra stands for the Yoga Ancient Trends and Recent Advancement. So we are just going from the initial aspects where the yoga started and how yoga has evolved and how it should be. So now we are on the third webinar, and here we will be. learning and listening to the topic on yoga and cultural misappropriation so uh, for the welcome note i would like to invite dr garima jaswal ma'am uh, for the welcome note over to you ma'am thank you mr minachal sir good morning to all dignitaries member of the program i feel proud to state that department of yoga and naturopathy sbu organized this webinar on yoga ancient trends and recent advancements yatra under the gracious guidance and blessings of our chancellor honorable jayshri mohta ma'am pro chancellor honorable bk dalan sir and our ceo honorable dr pradeep kumar verma sir today we have with us honorable dr ananda bal yogi bhavnani sir director of center for yoga education and research shri balaji vidyapeet pondicherry as our speaker of the day i would i would also like to welcome our honorable vice chancellor dr gopal pathak sir registrar honorable dr vijay kumar singh sir respected dean nursing and public health dr subani bara ma'am respected administrator mr ashutosh dwedi sir our learned faculty department of yoga and naturopathy mr nilachal sir dr namrata ma'am mr pankaj kesri sir mr sail sir i would like to also welcome all the professor research scholar student yoga seekers from the different corner of the country in this webinar yatra i once again warmly welcome all of you to online webinar yatra 
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर नाउ thank you dr garima ma'am now in this uh, sequence now i would like to invite our respected dean nursing and public health dr subani bara ma'am for her address thank you good morning everybody i really feel proud to state that department of yoga and naturopathy sallavilla university ranchi has organized this yatra with nurses i thank our honorable vice chancellor dr gopal patak sir and respected registrar dr vijay kumar singh for their support and approval for this webinar series it's a pleasure to have dr anand ji director and professor of yoga therapy at the center for yoga therapy education Sri Balaji Vidya Peet Pandicherry. I express my gratitude to Sri Balaji Vidya Peet University for accepting our invitation to this Yatra webinar series. I wish all the best for Mr. Nilanchen, the convener and convener of this Yatra series, joint coordinator. of the department of yoga and naturopathy dr garima madam uh, madam uh, namrata chauhan professor of yoga and naturopathy and all those who are involved in this program i would like to thank them the topic yoga and cultural misappropriation is very important in the modern context and i am sure we all will learn more about this from this webinar i wish you all all the best thank you so much ma'am for the welcome uh, address now now i'd like to invite our respected admin sum co coordinator of the department of yoga and naturopathy mr ashutosh devedi sir for his address over to you sir sabhi इस वेबिनार में आए हुए लोगों को सुप्रभात आज हम लोग इस योग की यात्रा में सरला बिरला विश्वविद्यालय की तरफ से एक मालिका के साथ जुड़े हुए हैं आज ये बहुत हर्ष का विषय है कि इस सत्र में अपने योगाचार्य डॉक्टर आनंद बालयोगी भवनानी जी हैं जो डायरेक्टर और प्रोफेसर योगा थेरेपी सेंटर फॉर योगा एजुकेशन श्री बालाजी विद्यापीठ पांडुचेरी से हैं। हम लोगों का ये सौभाग्य का विषय है कि अपने इस सरला बिरला विश्वविद्यालय के कुलपति प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर गोपाल पाठक जी कुल सचिव डॉक्टर विजय कुमार सिंह जी और अपने विश्वविद्यालय के मुख्य कार्मिक एवं प्रशासनिक प्रमुख चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर डॉक्टर प्रदीप वर्मा जी तीन योगा एंड नेचुरल पैथी एंड नर्सिंग डॉक्टर सुबानी वाड़ा योग के अपने जो इस यात्रा में प्रमुख रूप से अपने महती योगदान दिए ऐसे नीलांचल जी डॉक्टर नीलांचल जी अपने योग के प्रमुख है असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर गरिमा और नम्रता एवं अपने योग के बैचलर और स्नातक और परा स्नातक के विद्यार्थियों अभी हम लोगों को निश्चित रूप से असीम ऊर्जा डॉक्टर आनंद बालयोगी से मिलने वाला है जैसा कि आज का अपना जो विषय है योग्या एंशियंट ट्रेड एंड रिसेंट एडवांसमेंट अगर देखा जाए तो भारत संस्कृति और संस्कार का देश है केवल एक मिनट में एक छोटा सा उदाहरण के साथ मैं अपनी बात समाप्त करूंगा हम सभी विद्यार्थी इसमें जुड़े हुए हैं श्रेष्ठ है ज्येष्ठ है हम सबको पता है कि अपनी संस्कृति बहुत पुरातन है प्राचीन है और उस संस्कृति और संस्कार को अगर ध्यान में रखें कि तो बहुत छोटा सा उदाहरण हम लोगों के नित्य नियमित जीवन में देखने को मिलता है हम लोग देखते हैं कि दूध का जैसे जैसे संस्कार मिलता है वो घी तक बनता है और दूध जब ऐसे सामान्य रूप से रखा जाता है तो बहुत कम समय में वो नष्ट हो जाता है थोड़ा जब उसको गर्म करने का संस्कार देते हैं तो वो थोड़ा देर तक रहता है 
जब दूध में थोड़ा हम लोग अपना सेकेरोमाइसिस सेरिवेसी डालते हैं तो वो दही में कन्वर्ट होता है योगार्ड कहते हैं वो लंबे समय तक होता है तो हमने गर्म किया और योगार्ड डाला या संस्कार दिया उस दही को फिर हम लोग जब मथते हैं तो नवनीत निकलता है वो मक्खन निकलता है जब हम लोगों ने मथने का संस्कार दिया तो वो नवनीत बना और अंत में जब उस नवनीत को थोड़ा गर्म करते हैं तो घी का स्वरूप लेता है हमने दूध को संस्कारित करके क्रमशः दही नवनीत और घी बनाया और यही संस्कार धीरे धीरे संस्कृति का निर्माण करता है भारत देश संस्कृति के निर्माण से निर्मित है इसलिए योग क्या होता है योग देवत्व के प्राप्ति या देव तत्व से जुड़ने का एक माध्यम हम लोग योग मानते हैं तो हम अभी अपने बीच जो डॉक्टर आनंद बाल योगी है उनको सुनने वाले हैं बहुत समय न लेते हुए हमें केवल तीन मिनट का समय दिया गया था हम सब उस अपने प्राचीन भारत की तरफ चले मुखर हो जिससे हम लोग पुनः एक बार विश्व गुरु के शीर्ष पे पहुंचना है अपनी बात इतना कहते हुए समाप्त करता हूं धन्यवाद सर इस उत्सुकता वर्धन के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कार्यक्रम की ओर बढ़ते हैं आगे हम लोग बढ़ते हैं I would like to introduce Dr. Ananda, sir, who is to give a bio. Uh, I would like to uh, just uh, give a brief introduction. Who is not a uh, uh, personality whom uh, we are able to give an introduction, but just to give a brief. Uh, Dr. Ananda Balyogi Bhavnani, sir, he is the director of Center for Yoga Therapy, Education and Research, and professor of yoga therapy at the Balaji Vidyapit Pondicherry. He is also chairman of the International Center for Yoga Education and Research, ICER, at Anand Ashram, Pondicherry, and Yogaanjali Natyalayam, the premier institute of yoga and Carnatic music and Bharatanatyam. He is the son and successor of the internationally acclaimed yoga team of Yoga Maharishi Dr. Swami Gita Nand Giri Guru Maharaj and Yoga Charani Kalima Mani Amma Ji, uh, Srimati Meenakshi Devi Bhavnani Ji. A recipient of the prestigious DSC Yoga from S. Vyasa, Yoga University in January 2019, he is a gold medalist in medical studies MBBS with postgraduate diploma in both family health as well as yoga and the advanced diploma in yoga under his illustrious parents in 1991-1993. to A fellow of the Indian Academy of Yoga, he has authored 19 DVDs and 25 books on yoga as well as published nearly 300, actually more than 300 papers, compilations and abstracts on yoga and yoga research in national and international journals. He has also written the book uh, on yoga and cultural misappropriation that we are going to uh, witness today. His literary works have more than 2,550 citations and uh, with an H index of 24 and I index of 48. In addition, he is a classical Indian vocalist, a music composer and choreographer of Indian classical dance. Without much uh, taking off the time, I'd like to extremely welcome uh, Dr. Anand Abalyogi Bhavanani, sir. We are very uh, enthusiastic and we are very lucky to have you in this today's uh, webinar. I welcome you, sir. I welcome uh, all the participants. Over to you, sir. Namaste, Danyabad. Thank you so much, uh, Nilachal, for the kind uh, introduction. A pleasure to listen to uh, Ma'am Suvarni Balaji, Ashutosh Dvivedichi, and uh, my uh, beautiful yoga family joining from all over the world. I uh, request, if possible, keep your videos on so that I can see you, because it's nice to know who's on the other side and always we have Dr. Ramadidiji. He is always part of every event from Australia. We have Haumin and others. And so thank you so much to the Sarala Bivala University Department of Yoga and Nashwapati for this opportunity to be with you during the Yatra series. The term Yatra imp implies a journey. Journey ka matlab hai, yek jaga se dusra jaga jana so, yatra hai. so we are going from one place to another. Where are we going from the known to the unknown? That is the biggest yatra for any learner, any student. The principle of teaching is to go from the known to the unknown. So that known to the unknown is the yatra that we are trying to take. And a yatra is not just a journey. 
यात्रा का मतलब है उस उस पे एक सेक्रेडनेस है एक सैंक्टिटी है सो इट इज ए सेक्रेड जर्नी क्योंकि इट इज नॉट जस्ट एन एक्सटर्नल जर्नी फ्रॉम पाण्डिचेरी टू रांची और फ्रॉम रांची टू डेली और फ्रॉम चेन्नई टू सिडनी इट इज नॉट जस्ट एन एक्सटर्नल जर्नी इट इज एन इंटरनल जर्नी बिकॉज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट जर्नी एज अूमन बींग इज द इंटरनल जर्नी फ्रॉम वे वी आर नाउ टू वे वी कैन बी what we are now to what we can be because swami vivekananda has so beautifully paraphrased our vedic literature he said every soul is potentially divine this is not only swami vivekananda statement he made it popular it is from the vedic mahavakyam tatvamasi so we are not different than the highest so with these introductory remarks i would like to invoke the guru parampara before i go into my actual talk today tat parampara ya vidmahe jnana lingeshwaraya nimahi tanno guru prachodayat om ओम योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद गिरि गुरु महाराज की जय ओम पुदुवे कले मामणि पुदुवे शक्ति योग चारणी अम्मा जी मीनाक्षी देवी भवनानि गुरु माता की जय ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम when nilachal garima and the whole team they said uh, will you give us a session during our yatra which is part of the yoga day because we are now in yoga day fever so pura desh mein yoga day fever is going on they said will you give a talk i didn't even have to think about a topic because they know what is the topic i love and they chose my topic for me yoga and cultural misappropriation in fact during the pandemic i have been giving many sessions including what was today 98 saturday morning sessions today was the 98th non stop session working towards 108 aaj ka topic morning mein manipur chakra so like that different topics one of the important topics was cultural misappropriation and this came because many of my students abroad who are very sincere in yoga they said ananda ji we don't know how to deal with the modern yoga kyunki modern yoga to plasticized yoga hai circus yoga ban gaye sab bechne wale yoga to ban gaye aajkal it has become seller mode yoga consumeristic yoga they said we don't know how to deal with this problem i said it is a problem not only uh, in western country in india also we have that problem today that what is yoga as part of indian culture bharatiya sanskriti we have forgotten so we also are thinking yoga is some keep fit exercise to be done in some gym we are also thinking that yoga is some athletic pursuit that has come from china or something itna to we have lost connection so i gave a talk on that that talk then became a book and in fact uska hindi translation is being one we have got a bit delayed but nilachal and others have contributed deeply to it and we are hoping that uh, hindi translation of the ebook will also come soon this is the background now why do we need to know about this topic why do we need to address this topic because if we are to understand yoga in its purna swarupa the purna swarupa of yoga if we want to understand we have to keep it in the context of the indian culture because yoga has come out of the indian culture as is said popularly 
it is the greatest gift india has given to the world so we have given the gift so it not that we say oh give me back the gift it is not we cannot do that ek bar to gift de diya to de diya bas you cannot go fir se wapas karo you cannot go and tell people that is not uh, good so we have given the gift to the world okay but how that gift is being used how that gift is being respected or not respected well we can say something about it and how we are respecting the gift we have given the world is also a question i ask myself because nowadays i am finding so many so many people who are not understanding the importance of the context of yoga yoga ek context hai if you take it out of context it will not have the same meaning ek udaharan i will give you one example there is a nice fish in the water a very beautiful rainbow colored fish all the colors of the rainbow and that fish it is swimming in the water now what you do is you take that fish out of the water you put it on the sand for a couple of hours kya ho gaya usko mar gaya karam it's finished now you say oh this fish i will take home and i'll study it See, studying a fish taken out of the water that has got dried. After a few days, it will decompose also. It will start to stink also. And then you say, "I am studying this fish. I will know everything about that fish. You will know nothing about that fish." If you want to understand that fish, that beautiful rainbow-colored fish, what you need to do is go into the water. You need to go into the water with the fish. and swim with that fish understand the water in which that fish is alive that fish when it is alive when it is thriving you can understand it in its purna swarupa once it has come out of the water once it is dried and decomposed it is not its purna swarupa anymore it is only having one kosha annamaya kosha sab kosha to khatam ho gaya so you are only looking at annamaya kosha that also not a functioning annamaya kosha but a uh, spoiled annamaya kosha degenerated disintegrated annamaya kosha and this is what is happening with yoga today we have to keep yoga in its context what is the context context is bharatiya sanskriti the context is sanatana dharma the context is its roots in indian culture and this is why when maharishi patanjali talks about yoga he doesn't start off with asan in the yoga sutra we find there is no single asana mentioned koi asan nahi hai us pe he has given the asan ka sthiti diya unhone he has given the state of asan koi pranayama technique nahi diya unhone pranayama ka ek sthiti diya unhone he has given a state of asan state of pranayama similarly he has said the most important aspect the pillar the foundation what is that pillar yam niyam because without the yam niyam asan pranayama will only make you a better thief asan pranayam even to some extent dharana and all that it will make you a better villain super villain ho jayega because if you don't have yam niyam you don't have the morals and ethics you don't have the context of why yoga is to be practiced why yoga is to be lived and this is why the context of yoga has to be understood maharishi patanjali tells us very clear he says yogaanga anushthanat ashuddhi kshaye jnana deepti avivek kyatehe that is the context of ashtanga yoga that then he enumerates as yama niyama asana pranayama satyahara dharana dhyana samadaya ashtao angani the eight limbs of yoga people again translate eight steps of yoga iska koi step nahi hai this is not step this is ang every limb is important 
Now, what has happened in modern times is that initially yoga was practiced and taught in the Guru Shishya Guru Shishya Parampara ka matlab kya hai? The Guru knows the student pakka. The student knows the Guru pakka. Aajkal kya hai? 200 hours yoga teacher training course hote. 200 hours yoga teaching me. Student doesn't know the teacher. Teacher doesn't know the student. Koi context nahi hai. Like in 200 hours katam ho gaya. Yoga Alliance ka ek certificate mil, mil gaya. Bahad maha yogi to ho gaya. Just imagine how our rishis, how many years they would study, how many decades the sadhana would be done before they even call themselves a yogi. Ajkalto, even before first yoga class, we buy a yoga mat, we say, I'm yogi. I bought a yoga mat, I'm a yogi. This is misappropriation. Doesn't matter whether it is being done in America, Australia, Germany, or India. Doesn't matter where it is being done. So don't think that I'm saying, oh, it is only the Western countries who are misappropriating. We also are misappropriating. Aaj Facebook mein yek post mila hamko. Yek Adi Yogi ka. You know Adi Yogi is the right? Yek statue hai hamara Koyambatur mein. Bohat. But a statue. Uska yeg body a perfume hai. Adi yogi body a perfume. You rub that perfume, you'll go into meditation. Just imagine, this is not from America. This is not from Australia. This is not from England. This is happening in India. And that is why this topic is not to say that only the Westerners are doing. It has happened in the West. Because what happened? Amara Yoga Guru, they went to the West. And they understood, very difficult here to talk about Yam Niyam. Nobody will come to class. I'll tell you, even in our country, you take a class and you start with Yam Niyam, nobody will come next class. Everybody wants some Shirsasan, Sarvangasan, Pinchamayurasan, Yek Bakrasan, Yek Gold Medal Milna Chaye. Itna to hogaya ajkal. So they realize if I talk about yam niyam, if I say ahimsa, they will say, sir, I am not coming next class. So they said, what will we do? We will teach them asan directly. So asan became yoga. So no talk about yam niyam. No discussion about the context of yoga. So it became you do trikonasan, you do paschimottanasan, you do halasan, and you do karnapidasan. And if you cannot do, I will push you into that asana. And then what happened? People say, oh, this is what it is. Already people in the West, there was a physical consciousness. People said, we want to do something. In our country, you go to any park, only now you will see a few people walking and doing something. But you go to China, every park is filled with people who are doing some exercise. People have that exercise consciousness. In the Western countries, the young children, they spend time in playground. In our country, how many children play time time, time in playground? Ajkal playground me, there was a problem in Delhi. IAS officer is taking his dog. Kutte ko uspe dalne ke liye to the sports people were not given the stadium. See what is happening. We have. So, yoga, they were better the best. They some different. when they come to yoga. When they come to when they keep teaching, they have the discipline. We have to learn that from the Western country, that discipline. Amara Parasto, indiscipline jada hai. Discipline hai. That is why Maharishi Patanjali says, Atha yoga anushasanam. Yoga is a discipline to be lived in the present moment. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. So they have that discipline. So you tell them do trikonasana, they will practice for 30 days trikonasana, they will do better than you. You give them pinchamayurasana, they will do yekahasta pinchamayurasana. 
you do shirasan they will do nilamba shirasan because what happened they said we will push ourselves we will go and so what happened is yog became a physical activity a fitness activity and people forgot there is something called spirituality the spiritual context of yoga was lost then people are scared if we use the term india what will happen if we say sanskrita what will happen will i lose people if i say this is this asan is called ado mukha shwanasan will i lose a client will i lose a student not client and student they are consumer now because you are offering a business so it is consumer consumer protection act mein aa jayega guru shishya see how that guru shishya has gone into seller buyer relationship guru shishya was not seller buyer relationship it was a loving respectful relationship that went both ways this became seller buyer relationship so what has happened seller buyer relationship mein who is important buyer is important in any business the consumer is always right so what has the it has shifted the balance the balance shifted from the guru teaching the shishya what they needed to the provider giving the consumer whatever the consumer wanted this is a very important change and this is happening now in our country also so i want all of us to be very aware of this because what is happening if you are not careful we have shifted from that cultural context of yoga which was the guru understanding what the shishya needed not what they wanted the guru understanding what the shishya needed and testing them the guru tested them सीधा सादा क्लास में थी नहीं टीचिंग्स वर नॉट गिवन लाइक फिंगर चिप्स नो इट वॉज गिवन वेन द स्टूडेंट वॉज रेडी सो द गुरु अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज द स्टूडेंट नीड फॉर एवोल्यूशन योगा इज माइंडफुल कॉन्शियस एवोल्यूशन हाउ कैन यू हेल्प दैट पर्सन अटेन द पोटेंशियल and that was provided now what has happened seller buyer relationship so buyer says i want kapal mati give it to me today tomorrow i want shirsasan give it to me and we have become a seller so we have to provide i wanted to understand how the shift has occurred this is the shift that we have to deal with because until and unless the student and the teacher share a relationship of mutual coexistence iska word hai mutual coexistence harmonious coexistence it is not the student for the sake of the teacher or teacher for the sake of the student both are growing in the guru shishya parampara there is a constant growth happening now when it becomes seller provider you are providing a service itna hai bas and so the student is i paid you fees you teach me i paid you fees you teach me so this is where what has happened is the cultural basis which was the guru shishya parampara has been eroded has disintegrated and we have a seller buyer consumeristic model going on this is cultural misappropriation of yoga second thing when you use the sanskrita term uska ye ek shakti hai there is a certain energy to it when you say vikshasan vikshasan ka matlab not just three posture there is a whole bijakshara happening there there is a whole vibrational ethos happening there the moment you say viksha uska itna to points hai kyunki not only every viksha there is something called kalpa viksha also we are teaching gomukhasan gomukhasan translation cow face 
why you want to have a cow face you want to have a cow face you want to human face a cow cow face why you should not gomukhasan see gomuk is not just cow face that is a literal translation all of you know where does ma ganga come from gomuk gangotri ke couple uh, some kilometers away is the glacier called gomuk us gomu glacier se ma ganga shuru hoti and then coming down through gangotri then coming down haridwar rishikesh and kashi all of that journey is there so when we do the gomu kasan it is not only cow face it is creating an energy that is connecting to the gomuk from which ma ganga is coming similarly hamara andar bhi ye ganga hai मा गंगा हमारा अंतर भी है एंड दैट इज टू डू विथ योर नाडी एक एक नाडी एवरी नाडी हैज ए नेम दैट इज मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम रिलेटेड टू वन ऑफ द रिवर्स वेन वी टॉक ऑफ इडा पिंगल सुषुमना वी टॉक ऑफ गंगा यमुना सरस्वती एज इक्वल इन द वेन यू आर डूइंग गोम कासन इट इज नॉट ओनली काउ फेज पॉस्चर इट इज कनेक्टिंग टू द कल्चर एथोस ऑफ वट गोमुक इज from the source of gomuk how ma ganga is coming inside us what is the ganga what are the functions that is being evoked and that is why when we just translate it when we translate it as cow face when people say adomukha shwanasan first of all that is meruvasana parvatasan usko adomukha shwana shwanasan bana diya theek hai that became downward facing dog posture डाउनवर्ड फेसिंग डॉग पॉस्चर उसको शॉर्ट एंड कर दिया डाउन डॉग सो आज कल इफ यू गो टू योगा स्टूडियो इंस्ट्रक्टर आई वॉन्ट यून कॉल दम टीचर द इंस्ट्रक्टर द प्रोवाइडर या द योगा प्रोवाइडर विल बी सेंग डाउन डॉग अप डॉग डाउन डॉग अप डॉग डाउन डॉग अप डॉग क्या है इस is there any connection to what yoga is connected to down dog up dog that way totally disconnected because what is the essence of that posture what is that essence of that sequence has totally been taken out of context it has totally been taken out of context and that is where cultural misappropriation comes in when the relationship of teacher and student has changed from guru shishya it has changed to provider buyer consumer when the samskrita energy of the terms that took us into the concept when you say cow face you will never relate cow face with ganga it will not it's not possible you if, if somebody says cow face how you will think of ma ganga but if they say gomuk you will understand that where does ma ganga start See, this is where that cultural context gives you a clue to understand the purna swarupa of yoga. So it is not saying, "Oh, you want to popularize Sanskrit? Oh, you want to sound very elitist? Why you cannot be practical and just call it cow face, dog face, monkey face?" No, it's not about being practical. It is about being worthy of those teachings and looking at what is the context. so that you can expand so ek cheez to guru shishya parampara foundation that has been eroded second thing as i said the use of sanskrita which is the technical language of yoga yoga technical language has sanskrita see if i am practicing medicine there are certain terms there is a term pancreas there is a term liver there is a term lung there is a term kidney ascending colon descending colon i say ek term hai i cannot just go and say whatever i want to call it that funny thing in your abdomen pancreas yeah i can i cannot just say oh no i don't like the term pancreas so i'm going to call it what i want jelly bean can you do that can you call the pancreas jelly bean and get away with it in medical school then why people can come and say down dog and get away in yoga school see the context is missing when i was a medical student i made it a point to understand the logic behind every medical terminology 
because the medical terminology comes from greek and latin greek and latin if you go to it you will understand the term you will never forget it in your life you don't have to memorize it you will understand it completely same thing with yoga when you start to understand the context it will become part and parcel of you but what is happening people are trying to memorize it and then they say it is too tough so so important so important that we understand every science has its own technology every science has its terminology and if that science of yoga is to be understood its technology and terminology must be used as it is but what we want to do we want to make it convenient see now my dear nilachal is there if i say nilachal he will come he will respond if i say tom he is not going to come see his essence is nilachal nilachal to when we are calling nilachal nilachal will come if i call tom tom will come not nilachal when i say no 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 nilachal is difficult for me so i'll call you tom you cannot do that yoga is a living tradition not dead yet people are trying to kill it it's still alive it's alive and kicking very very strong that tradition must be respected by respecting its terms its concepts and how that tradition is passed on this is very important i cannot come to an academic institution and say you know i will call myself a professor i cannot do that to become a professor uska ek methodology hai pehla ye qualification hai uske baad to you have experience uske baad research publication hona chahiye uske baad you have to have seniority itna credential on uh, hote ke baad to you become a professor and aajkal people they do 200 hour yoga uh, training and suddenly mahayogi professor of yoga aisa bolte hai yeah bakwas so crazy this is what is happening both in western countries and in our own country this is why we we as sons and daughters of ma bharat we are sons and daughters of ma yog we owe it to her to be good children if somebody talks bad about your mother will you keep quiet i don't think so right if somebody talks bad about your mother if somebody misbehaves with your mother if somebody starts making cartoons of your mother will you will you be quiet and how can we be quiet when same thing is happening to ma yog yog bhi hamara ma hai how we can be quiet i am not saying go and punch people i am not saying be violent but what i am saying we should be the example so that people will see oh this is the indian gold standard of yog we should have that standard by saying yes this is the culture of yog this is the tradition of yog and the moment it tries to be taken out of context it is misappropriation misappropriation ka matlab hai stealing it bank mein paisa hai if somebody steals your money in bank they call it misappropriation of fund this is the misappropriation of yog and what has happened the whole culture is being cleaned away no no we don't want the culture we don't want all these ideas see if you don't want the culture if you don't want the ideas why call it yoga call it physical exercise and do whatever you want you go and do what you want i don't care but the moment you use the term yoga then it has to be in the context of the culture this is why respect for the culture appreciation for the culture now people ask me because so many of my students come from so many countries they say ananda ji what can we do we are not indian we cannot become indian okay some people can become indian if you live long enough here and you apply after all the red tape is up my mother came to india it took her nearly half her life to get indian citizenship and from day one she applied because she said i came to india and i came home nearly half a life it took to get the citizenship so you can become indian citizen yes 
it is a bit more difficult when people want to become hindu because whereas with other religion in hinduism there is no conversion process arya samaj has some shuddhi kriya and some methodology but it is not so common people say oh, do i have to become indian do i have to become hindu i say no you don't have to wherever you are you can be what you are but you need to respect the culture where yoga has come from you need to appreciate the culture where yoga has come so that you are giving it the respect it deserves you are giving it the sanctity it deserves and this is very important and so many of our students they understand that so they understand when you begin a yoga class it is not a gym class okay come on let's all bounce and jump no there is a methodology to start there is a prayer us prayer me you are remembering the guru parampara you are remembering the devatas when you do the practice you are trying to go introspective hey look at her look at him no look at yourself see this is the context we have to build and as we build this context we start to realize how thank you say creditors so the sanctity again a very common thing that happens people have no idea what you know india is they have no idea what hinduism is but they heard some place if you have a yoga studio you should put some thing on the wall like an om so ek om ka picture you buy it on the internet and put it on the wall uske baad kuch rudraksha mala you order from online from rishikesh some company will send you via amazon delivery okay you will get one nice rudraksha mala uske baad you get one buddha statue put that buddha statue so now everybody is like ah i'm so spiritual they don't even know how to put it what direction to put it when you put a statue a sacred statue there is a direction to face normally all our gods are facing east so that when that morning sun is coming that first ray of the sunlight should fall on that devata there is only one deity who is right above me here dakshina murthy shiva who sits in the north facing south because he is the principle of the guru tattva so the guru tattva is north to south that is the energy flow all other devatas most of the time they'll face east unless there is some special reason not to do so they will put the statue in any way they want people don't even know what is the front of the statue and the back of the statue om ka ek painting hai they'll put it in reverse or upside down and then they'll say oh i'll show my studio is very uh, cultural friendly so all the yoga mat i'll put one om on it so people can stand on that om this is what is happening this is what is happening and people think oh i'm following the culture oh india yeah 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 i bought some mats from india and there om on it and then there'll be ganesha on that mat and you'll stand on it yeah bakwas bilkul bakwas this is why it is not just symbology putting something there you have to understand what is the symbology if you are using a ganesha image what is the symbology of ganesha if you are using an om what is the symbology of that om because in the om the akara ukara makara you are having all the avastas are there jagrat swapna shushupti and then going into the turiya all of that that is in that om not just it looks like a nice uh, symbol this is again where people have to appreciate the culture so we have to help people move from cultural misappropriation to cultural appreciation this is actually the journey we have to do remember i told you yatra is a journey from where we are to where we need to go from the known to the unknown that is why nilachal put the topic as the theme as yatra he didn't know that i would bring this in also we have to the journey asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya mrityarma amatangamaya that type of journey from cultural misappropriation to cultural appreciation aisa ek journey ek yatra hona chahiye so it is not to say oh you all bad you are doing wrong no okay you are doing wrong can you try to correct yourself can we help people because not everybody does it wantedly many people don't understand they came to india they went to rishikesh 
all that 200 hour teachers training in rishikesh they picked up some rudraksha mala for which that person charged 5000 rupees for a 500 rupee mala they got all of that happened they took it back they don't know what to do with that rudraksha so they hang it around the door on the door knob they don't know what to do because they don't know nobody has told them nobody has helped them develop cultural appreciation and this is why cultural appreciation should start to become part of yoga teachers training all yoga teachers training should have cultural appreciation embedded in it when you are doing asan what is the cultural appreciation of asan when you are doing pranayam what is the cultural appreciation when you are dressing what is the cultural appreciation what is the culturally appropriate dress for yoga not leotards i'm sorry that was never but that has become the style instagram yoga insta yoga right ye leotard mein asan ko ek mountain ke upar karke usko instagram mein post karo sab like de diye we have also fallen to that what is the culturally appropriate way to dress what is the culturally appropriate way to express the concept you know there was some time back the concept of namaste hamara to greeting hai namaste namaskar hai that namaste was taken to namasle s l a y namasle it became a big thing a few years ago they don't know what is the meaning of namaste so they made one they they thought they being very creative unethical creativity leads to this nonsense namasle there there is some more which i don't even want to tell you some recent ones i have seen hmm? you know there is something called uh, you go on hashtag you will find yoga every damn day uska uska phrase me that phrase itself is disrespectful that phrase itself is disrespectful it is not culturally acceptable see this is this is the thing what has happened is people take the term yog and they wanted to put it in anything they take the term guru huh? market guru kya what is the, what is the meaning of guru they have totally taken out of context and that taking it out of context is cultural misappropriation people say how do i know when it is appropriation misappropriation appreciation it is like plagiarism you all in academic institution plagiarism mein kya hai you write an article now it is very common so what do you do you have to write an article so you will go and take 10 people's article you take one paragraph from one two paragraphs from the other one more paragraph you put all that paragraph together you say ah oh, this is my article you put it in plagiarism check bilkul 100% seedha saada gold medal in plagiarism mil jayega gold medal in plagiarism okay that is what often comes plagiarism is theft plagiarism is misappropriation and that is why just Just like in academics, we have integrity that you don't plagiarize. You have to give reference to the source. You have to quote the original source. This is the way academic writing is done. Many of you are in the academic institution. The academic writing you should quote. If you say one, two, three, four, five, who has said that one, two, three, four, five? Which paper has said it? Which book has said it? This is academic integrity. that is the same integrity that we are asking in yoga that when you say yes this is the teaching of yoga kahan se aa gaya us teaching who has given that teaching you have to mention that teaching to what parampara you belong you should mention it so many people they say oh i have been practicing yoga 10 years i am like very good who is your teacher well you know i don't really remember his name yeah we you don't even know your teacher's name for 10 years you have been practicing yoga that's not yoga at all See, these these are things that are very important the name of the guru is important it's like saying you know i i don't remember my father's name 
it's as bad as that when you say i cannot remember my guru's name it is as bad as saying i cannot remember my father's name i'm sorry but that is how bad it is because it is theft we have to give recognition to those who have come before us we have to give recognition to the tradition that has flourished before us that tradition that is today allowing us to share yoga that is cultural appreciation that is integrity and if we don't do it it is misappropriation some time back there was an article on the internet a very nice article i was like this is so nice this author is writing just like i write my thoughts resonating with my thoughts i kept reading and then i came to one paragraph and it said my father swami geetananda then i realized this person has plagiarized my article 100% pura hamare mera article leke unka naam dal diya authorship mein he didn't even change the fact that i had in my article said my father swami geetananda not only he plagiarized my article he was insulting my father huh? people do that i wrote to his guide because the guide's name was also in that article when i bola i said you know what is this he said i'm sorry sir i didn't know i thought it is very nice article so we sent it for publication i said as a guide you should have at least checked the student also plagiarized the guide is guide also didn't care about it then i said now what to do it's already one publication in uh, it was a chapter in one uh, book also pura hamara 100 percent plagiarism that is theft that is misappropriation and this is happening in yoga so coming back giving due respect to the tradition of yoga understanding the symbology of what we are using when we are using a symbology what is the symbology when we wear a rudraksha mala what is the symbology it is not just a jewelry it is not just a decorative piece a ganesha idol is not just to put on one corner of the room because that corner was empty so you don't know what to do you put a ganesh statue there do you understand what ganesh ji is do you understand what hanuman ji is do you understand what adi yogi shiva is if you understand then how you can sell a perfume saying you rub body rub it on you, you uh, adi yogi body rub you'll go into meditative state total misappropriation and this is why we need to bring our self back so this is why what we did was from my talk we then took forward an ebook and i hope you can see my screen i'll share a few bits of this not the whole book but you can see which was on yoga and cultural misappropriation as you can see this book it came as a result of our team work so malini in australia padma in canada help me put this together and what i talk about i should practice so the first page itself is an acknowledgement of the source from where i have got my yoga knowledge whatever i know today whatever i share has come from my gurus my parents swami geetananda and amma ji that is the first thing i should share because i am telling you you should acknowledge i am saying you should not do academic theft so i should live what i am saying and then concept of standing up for yoga so it is very important to stand up but it should not just be oh you don't like that person so you'll say oh their cultural misappropriation to shut down the studio it's not an ego based thing and that is why let us get to the root uh, is the uh, book changing pages and milachal changing right it's come to that stand up for yoga page okay just to make sure that the root is yoga yoga is universal yoga is thriving nourished by the culture of sanatana dharma love the culture love yoga live yoga 
and let that manifest in every cell of your existence. That is cultural appreciation. And so then we go on. There's a video and all on this and all. And this is the talk part. But I wanted to come. See, what I was talking about is appreciation. How can we develop the cultural appropriateness, appreciation and respect? And every one of you in this uh, webinar, if you are interested, uh, Nilachal has given the link. You can download it from the web. It is free download because I believe that everybody should have this as part of their understanding. So here we are talking about yoga advocacy. How do you talk about yoga? Where do you position yourself? Whenever I am talking, whenever I'm sharing, I place myself in the parampara where my gurus who have come before me are there above me. And then I come to share with those who come after me. So what is your position? Not that Dr. Ananda expert and Dr. Ananda knows it all. No, it is your positionality. And what type of speech? How are we going to maintain the sanctity? How do we maintain the sacredness? And the objects, how do we treat them? How do we teach yoga? How do we teach teachers? And then how do we study yoga? How do we write on yoga? All of this is part of it. And so for these concepts, we came out with a whole series. Padma created these beautiful images. When we write on yoga, we should represent the yoga culture teachings accurately, respectively with love. We create work that increase the knowledge of truth moving from avidya to vidya. And we cite from sources of integrity. This is how you write about yoga. When you study yoga, you learn yoga and scriptures in the traditional Guru Shishya context. Try to find the primary source. It is very important. You refer to the author and text accurately. And again, find sources of integrity and study them and have the respectful approach when studying. When we are teaching, we have to teach, train the teachers in a holistic cultural context. The, you have to inspire love for yoga in those who you are teaching. And those teachers should have that context of what is the Purna Swarupa, Purna Swarupa of yoga, the holistic picture. And this way we continue the living tradition. When we teach, we are teaching within a yoga sampradaya. There are the different traditions in India. Our culture has all the different yoga traditions. There are from Bihar School of Yoga, Kaivalya Dhamma, the Yoga Institute, Dev Sanskriti, uh, Swami Rama of the Himalaya. So many traditions are there. In the qualified sampradaya, teaches yoga according to the tradition. Appropriate role modeling. The person who's teaching yoga should be a role model of what yoga is. And remember, we will never be that perfect person. We are a lifelong yoga learner. We are everyday learning. Even as I talk to you now, I am learning something. Because as you teach, you will learn. And that is why I always advise, go out and teach. Because the more you teach, the more you learn. Similarly, when you... Talk about yoga. What is your speech? It should be sacred speech. You should respect and apply the terms. Understand the importance of yoga as the technical language and grow in understanding Sanskrita and the philosophical traditions of yoga. The sacred objects. What is the purpose? Where do you place the sacred object? Where it is to be put in the traditional method? You source it, you display it, and you trade it fairly ethically. And you give to people who respect and use it in the traditional way. In our tradition, if somebody is worthy of it, I give them a Rudraksha. Not that just to give them so that you impress them. Ajkal, though, what happens? The people meet each other and they give one Rudraksha as if it's one, you know, just some visiting card. No, no, no. There is a sanctity. There is a you have to know, is the other person capable of understanding what you are giving? What you are giving is very important if they understand. And then, where is your position? 
You don't put yourself in front. I never put myself in front. Always, your position in the parampara, your connection to the parampara. It is we understand the culture, we love yoga, we live yoga, and we know our place and we grow in it. And then how do you advocate about yoga? How do you go out and stand up for yoga? You understand your adhikara. You are understanding. I may have a perspective, but if Ammaji, who is my guru, and she is the top person in my tradition who is here now. So if I say something and Ammaji says, no, what you are saying is wrong, this is correct, I will not argue with her. I will accept because I understand that she is the one who knows better than me. This is the understanding that we need to develop. And we have to take a stand with the principle and teaching of the tradition. This is a very important point. And that is why yoga dharma is where we love the culture. We love yoga. We live yoga. And so we have the right use. We respect it. We love it. There's integrity. There's fidelity. And there's commitment. This is what we want to take into all teacher training programs. This is what we want to share. Because otherwise, we go into cultural misappropriation, denial, and misuse. Where what is happening? People writing on yoga, you can see, Pura paisa ke liye to sab kuch karte. They are only trying to earn out of it. They create their own source. There's nothing to do with tradition. They distort. They distort everything for their own self goal. Nothing else. How do they study yoga? They, they study in a sterile yoga, plasticized yoga. They don't acknowledge that teacher, they don't acknowledge the tradition and they think, oh, tradition is old. I know. Mine, mine is neo-yoga, modern yoga. Why call it yoga? Call it something else and go. Teaching teachers, plastic yoga, my favorite term. Plastic yoga, Ajkal. No culture. Bilkul bina culture, though you have plasticized yoga. What happens is they dilute, they modify and inaccurately, they represent the teaching. It looks like the real thing, but it is not. Made in China here. You know, you take something and you think, oh, this is very good. And you, then you find at the bottom, made in China. In India, we have a lot of that. You have to be very careful. What are you, what are you, uh, what is the source? Teaching yoga. What these people do, they erase the culture. They take out the Sanskrit. And they make it into a body-only fitness practice. Then they try to patent it and trademark it. They fabricate, distort, dilute it, and they put a brand. This branding they create. This is where the whole problem comes. The ego becomes bigger than the tradition. And what do they do with all the sacred objects that are thrown out in the junk? They create objects with nothing in common. They misuse the sacred object. I told you, in the waiting room of the yoga studio where everybody is sitting with the shoes, they'll put on Nataraja. And they think they are, they're keeping, oh, this is very nice. I got a Nataraja. I don't even know what that Raja means. And it will be placed along with the shoe rack. Sacred speech. Again, there we talked of sacred speech. Here, they do anything with the Sanskrit. I told you, namaste becoming namaste. Slay. Slay ka matlab hai to maal do. Huh? Imagine what type of nonsense. Disrespectful, offensive. They, uh, recently I saw someone who has conjoined a term with the term yoga and the F word. You know the F word. They have put that F word with yoga and they are creating a new term. Imagine how hurtful it is. How disgraceful it is. How disrespectful it is. And then they position themselves as if they are the expert. They repackage yoga. They mislead the student. And they position I am number one. Not understanding what is the context. And then they advocate against parampara. They, they call it, they say post-lineage yoga. Uska matlab hai tradition ka koi matlab nahi hai. Throw the tradition in the junk box post 
ग्लाणी जर्नी because otherwise the misleading misrepresentation misuse that is coming in it is very very dangerous and if we are not careful that will become the standard and that is why this book was put together an e book by malini padma and myself it was my talk that then malini transcribed created the basic image then padma and canada she put together those beautiful cartoons all those cartoons belong to padma she is a very good graphic artist and then we put it up and we put it so that it can be free for all we put it so that it can be free for all and through the indian yoga association we also passed it on to everybody because we want that indian yoga association to stand up for the dharma of yoga against the dharma of yoga so with those thoughts the talk part i will conclude and we'll go into any questions that are there for some time because you may have lot of questions so please go ahead and ask your questions or type them out and i am over to nilachal for that thank you so much thank you sir thank you for uh, your uh, lecture thank you for your Uh, reason for how yoga should look like, and uh, moving further, we have a few questions, sir. I please mention in the chat box if you could see. Uh, the question goes like this: I want to ask that how can we keep traditional things as it is in our teachings and learnings? What steps should we take while we take sessions of practical and theory? Yeah, here one of the basic uh, ways to approach this is that. try to keep the sanskrita terminology as much as possible and translate it so when you are teaching you say this is samasthiti asan and in english for those who don't know it can be the equal balance posture so you can give the translation for the understanding but first start with the sanskrita let the sanskrita be the base and your should be the second part the second thing is that always acknowledge the source of your teaching who is your teacher who is the tradition what is the context in which you are teaching always acknowledge it don't make it sound like you are the first person to invent yoga many people do that you are not the first person you will not be the last person also because it is a living tradition so this is very important and the second most important thing for me is you have to live yoga whatever the concept of yoga whatever that philosophy psychology spirituality of yoga is in our shastra we are to live that because your students will not learn from listening to you they will learn by watching you as a parent your children do not listen to what you say they learn by watching you and that is why we as a parent we as a teacher must be a living role model of what yoga is that is the basic thing that we owe and always treat the other person with respect treat the other person with love because remember the more love the more respect the more gratitude you put out the more comes back to you so they are not just there they are paid the fees so they are there in class no never equate an individual with just the fees they pay please understand they are a human being 
So it is very important to have that respect for the other person as a human being, value them, and always create a space. I think as a teacher, it is very important to keep a space where your students are feeling safe. They should feel safe. Because if they feel threatened, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, it will never be you. So it is very important. Yes. Next question, please. Uh, yes, sir. The next question is, uh, I am not from any tradition. How can I select or uh, know which tradition is good or bad? Uh, it is not possible to not be from any tradition because where you learned, there will be a tradition there. So it is not possible to say, I don't have a tradition. See, you, if you, for example, I'll give you an example. I know what you are saying. Say you do a course in a university. So you say, okay, what is this? Uh, uh, what, is, what is the tradition? That university is one tradition. That is another way to understand. Like Dev Sanskriti. When Dev Sanskriti is there, I know that there's a certain cultural value which will be given to every student who comes out of DSDB. I don't, I don't have to worry about that. I know it is there. So it is a tradition. Now, when that tradition is taken and somebody is in a university teaching, you can retrace to that tradition. So it is not that you have to have one guru in front of you. The students of the tradition, students who have trained with us, when they teach, those students become part of our tradition. So you will definitely be part of some tradition. You may not realize the uh, how those dots are coming together yet. But if you put them together, you will find it. Hope you get the answer. So the next question is, how can we stick at traditional asanas while so many variations are not in use? That's true. See, I, I'm not saying you have to stick to only traditional asana. What I'm saying, practice the traditional asana, but also understand that today we may have to modify it based on the individual's guna, dosha, again, use the culture. What is the guna of the individual? What is the dosha of the individual? How can you make it accessible to them? What is the health status? So you are not inventing a new asana. That, what I'm saying is you are not inventing something new. You are keeping the tradition and you are saying this is the way it is done in tradition. For this person, I'm modifying in this way because of this reason. Then it is dharma. I told you, when you quote somebody's paper, you quote it properly, it is acceptable. But if you misquote it, or you don't give acknowledgement, then it is plagiarism. So ethical aspect is how you express it. I think a lot of it is in communication. Yes. Uh, so the next question is, sir, uh, is, it, is this is an, an option to make organization in yoga to stop such stupid things? It's a good question. We have the Indian Association of Yoga, and Indian Association of Yoga has all the major tradition. Sub tradition to hai uspe. Abhi currently to the, the, the first founding uh, president was B.K. Sayangarji. Uske baad to Kaivale Dama Sri Shri Opi Tiwari ji was the next president. Then Guruji H.R. Nagendra ji was the president. Now Ma Hansa ji from the Yoga Institute is president. So Aisa matlab sub tradition uspe hai. Currently our Chinmay Pandya ji is uh, vice president and I am joint secretary of the association. And our Subodh ji from uh, Kaivala Dhamma, he is the secretary general. So we are having a team, we are trying and uh, we are making efforts, we are making efforts. But it is not just association, it's like saying government should do something. Government will also have to do, but we also as an individual have to do. Because society is made up of every one of us. Society should change. What is society? All of us are making up society. So as I start to change, I influence the people around me, then society will change. So same thing in this, I think, at each level, we need to bring it. So the next question is, uh, there are many associations, organizations. Why shouldn't uh, we have only one school or one path, just like is medical, only pancreas is pancreas, where everyone is calling, uh, it is, why yoga is changing terms and conditions. You see, if you come to South India, hamara paas to dosa idli hai, ek nice vada hai. You go to Maharashtra, vada pao hai. You go to another place, dokla hai. You go up there, you will get pani puri, masala puri, your best taste. 
See, each part of India will have its own flavor. Each part of India has its own language. The strength of India is unity and diversity. And the strength of yoga is also unity and diversity. There are many diverse traditions, but they are all speaking the same language of yoga. So it, it is not that, oh, we have to have only one. Modern medical system is recently developed. Hence, they have focused it that way. But it, uh, you know, it's like, see, if, if you build a small uh, drain in your city, in your street, you can regulate it. Small drain you can regulate. To regulate Ma Ganga is very difficult. To regulate Ma, Ma Yamuna is difficult. And if you want to regulate the ocean, it is even more difficult. So yoga is like that ocean. So what we need to understand is, it is not that you can, you should only have one bottle of water from the ocean. The whole ocean can be there. One person will have a bottle, another person will have a cup, another person will have a spoon. And that is the beauty of yoga. So what I always say is, we should understand the different traditions of yoga. But when you are living it, practicing it, follow one tradition. So, I respect all the traditions. I understand all. And then I'm following mother and mother who are my gurus. But it doesn't mean I demean other traditions. Every tradition I respect. Every tradition I respect in its own context. And I try to understand it so that I can understand the diversity. See, if I just give you only double honor, some, uh, some uh, achar to hona chahiye. You know, you have to have different things as part of the meal. Like that, we have to have all these parts for the meal, the wholesome, healthy meal called yoga. So the next question is, uh, sir, since you mentioned that yoga is a Guru Shisha Parampara, how one can implement it in a present context? How can we spread it or implement it? it? Is I, I accept that it is difficult today because not too many institutes are still maintaining Guru Shishya because it is not economically viable. Uh, see, economic viability is what drives modern life. So if I have a center where I can have 100 students come every month, another center though it will be functioning. But if I have six month course with three students in it, it is an economically failed model. So the Guru Shishya model will not give you the economic aspects that people want today. So what we need to do is we need to see within our structure, can we create smaller groups? I think this is what is important. Rather than everybody wants this mass reach. During International Day of Yoga, everybody wants mass reach. Uh, 75 lakhs should do, 75 crores should do, everybody should do at the same time. All should do the same thing. See, we, we want that. Guru Shishya is like doing a PhD. See, when you do a PhD, there's a mentor and there's a mentee. For PhD, you don't have 10,000 students guided by one guide. Maximum eight students per guide. And sometimes if you're not careful, it becomes 10 also. But one professor is guiding eight students for PhD, not 800 students. But when you are uh, teaching PT class, you can have 200 students in the class and do PT class. See, there's a difference. Guru Shishya is like that. Guru Shishya Parampara is like the highest doc and postdoc training where there is one guide with a few selected students who have come to that level. So, from the mass, then you filter, 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 and then you come to that state. So, what I feel is wherever you are, you can create your own Guru Shishya Parampara with those who you value. Having a teacher who has a small group of students, the most important point with Guru Shishya Parampara is the Guru will know about each and every Shishya. That is the most important. Aajkal to kya hai maas circus mein, people don't even know what the other person looks like, let alone know them individually. I can give you a guarantee Every one of the members of my Gitananda Yoga family, every one of them, I will know them by name. I will know what are the likes and dislikes. I'll understand where they are, where they need to go. That is part of the tradition.
I know where they are. I know who they are. They know me as I am. I don't have to be on a pedestal. I don't have to be up on the window saying, oh, God bless you. No, not needed. Because that is a one-to-one -one relationship. But the one-to-one -one relationship can be with many also, depending on the individual. Uh, so one last question we have. Uh, sir. So there are many yogic breathing practices. How to define that this yogic breathing is one or pranayam uh, is good or which pranayam practice is good? Yeah. See, actually, it is not that you need one pranayam. See, the whole concept of pranayam is switching from automatic to cognitive volitional breathing. This is, this is the fundamental aspect of all pranayam. It doesn't matter whether you call it Nadi Shuddhi, Nadi Shodhan, Anulom, Vilom, Brahmavi, even Kapalvadi, it doesn't matter whatever you call it. The most important thing that is happening is automatic breathing that is going on. You are shifting from that automatic mode, which is called survival mode, to the cognitive choice-based mode called the living mode. So in all the pranayam, you are shifting from survival to living. You are shifting from autonomic, automatic to conscious, volitional. That is the most important part in all the planning. Because what is happening, you are changing the way your brain functions. The moment you change the way your, your brain functions, you change the way your mind functions. When you change the way your mind functions, it will again change the way your brain functions. It is called self-directed neuroplasticity. Self-directed neuroplasticity this is, and it doesn't matter which pranayam it will do that. Now our tradition has given these are some pranayam you can do. And then there are traditions like ours where we have a much more expanded perspective of pranayam. So normally people say there are the ashtakumbaka. We go up to 120 pranayam, which include variations, modifications, mental focus. All of this comes in to take it to a new level. It is not that each one is different. All of them ultimately come back to the same principle. Can you enhance your experience of prana shakti? That is the thing. Prana shakti ka anubhav usko jara karne ke liye ek moka hai praniya. You are getting that experience, that anubhuti. That is why yoga is anubhuti shastra. That is why it is based on anubhava on experience. So you are getting to experience what fan is. That is the highest goal of fan. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, now with uh, these words, although sir, uh, the uh, language, the mother tongue of sir is not uh, Hindi, he <laughs> had tried uh, his level best to explain us in Hindi. So thank you very much for understanding us and trying to make us understand Hindi. Uh, now coming to the uh, end of uh, this uh, webinar, but I would like to quote the one of your things that a good teacher must be a good learner and be ever ready to learn through the process of teaching. A true yoga chair motivates others by self-example and lead the way. And we really find this in you and thank you for motivating all of us all the yoga aspirants who have joined here and who will be watching you in the upcoming youtube videos of yours so with these words i would like to invite uh, dr namrata ma'am for the vote of thanks over to you ma'am thank you nilachal sir a very good morning to all it gives me a immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for the third day of webinar series yatra to all the dignitaries assembled here. First of all, my sincere thanks to our speaker of the day, Dr. Anand Balyogi Bhavnani, sir, for accept, accepting our invitation and for being with us this morning. Thank you, sir, for the interesting, highly motivating and informative session. We are grateful to our honorable vice chancellor, Professor Dr. Gopal Pathak, sir, for his word of encouragement. His able guidance has always encouraged us. I also want to thank our registrar, Professor Dr. V.K. Singh, sir, for his interest, vision, commitment, and continuous support. I would also like to thank our Dean, Nursing and Public Health, Dr. Subhani Bara, ma'am, for her guidance and encouragement in all our efforts. 
my heartly thanks to academician mr ashutosh kumar duvedi sir for his inspir inspirational thought next to my sincere thanks to mr nilachar dr garima jaiswal ma'am faculty of department of yoga and naturopathy for the wonderful idea for the benefit and students students and all yoga seekers last but not the least i thank you all of the students and participants for their active participation once again i thanks all one and all present here thank you uh, thank you namrata ma uh, now we come to the last part the shanti part by the yoga students thank you vishak thank you uh, thank you so much sir and all the participants thank we will you, meet again you. on yes thank you sir all the participants uh, all are requested uh, to fill the form which will be shared via mail uh, feedback form and uh, via mail and the whatsapp group and uh, our next webinar is on 11th of june so stay tuned us uh, we, we will be uh, dr chinna pandya will be with us on that day and uh, we will be ending our yatra the journey uh, which is the inner journey that we all learned today thank you all thank you all for participating and being a part of this yatra thank you